Great, Derek. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Well, as we approach the 20th anniversary of 9-11, uh, those of us in Manhattan, particularly those of us that were here in the city on 9-11-2001, uh, uh, it's been an ongoing, ongoing issue, particularly for the first responders and all the folks that were down in that part of Manhattan and, and Brooklyn and, and other places that were close by the Trade Center. Michael Barash, managing partner Barash and McGarry, joins us. And this, Michael, you've spent the past 20 years, you and your firm, representing, fighting for uh, the victims of 9-11 in terms of the first responders and all the health and medical issues they've had to deal with. I want, if you could just maybe give us a 30,000 foot overview of the programs that are available to these victims and, and your role. Well, thank you so much for following this and helping me spread the word. There are two programs that Congress created when they passed the Zedroga Health and Compensation Act. And thanks to the unions and our hero, John Stewart, permanently extended it in 2019. Um, there's the World Trade Center Health Program. And there is the Victim Compensation Fund. And these programs are nationwide, which is why I'm so glad to be speaking to your audience, because there were so many people working on Wall Street back in 2001 and 2002. And if they were south of Houston Street, they're entitled to free health care for the rest of their lives for the 68 cancers that have been linked to the World Trade Center toxins. Mm -hmm. If they were south of uh, Canal Street, they'd also be entitled to compensation for their certified illnesses. And sadly, only 7.5% of the non-responders have enrolled in the free, free health program so far. It's so frustrating. That's amazing. That's worth uh, repeating because I know a number of um, guys who trade stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, they had just walked out of the World Trade Center for breakfast that morning. So, you know... They are definitely eligible and haven't registered. Only 7.5% of non-responders have registered. Why are people not stepping forward? I mean, what, what do they need to do? Is it difficult? Is it um, complicated? What do you need to do to register? Okay, so you do need to prove that you are working. To use your example of the New York Stock Exchange, we represent, my law firm represents 334 people now from the Stock Exchange with cancer. They were exposed to the same toxins as the New York City firefighters and cops, which is why Congress created the health program and the Victim Compensation Fund. It's not hard to enroll in these programs and uh, get compensated for your illnesses, but every year that goes by, it becomes more and more difficult because you need to prove that you were working there. You know, it's, it's not that difficult for the guys working at the stock exchanges or at Goldman Sachs or at Citibank or Merrill Lynch or J.P. Morgan. They probably, those companies are still in existence, and they can write employer verification letters for their former employees. But, you know, imagine how hard it is for the people working at small shops Small law firms, small companies, they need to prove that they were there. And, you know, we want them to be able to prove that they were there. But a lot of those companies have gone out of business in the last 20 years. And as time goes on, and now both programs, by the way, have been permanently extended till the year 2090. Can you imagine how hard it's going to be able to prove that you were working at a small little business 10 years, 20, 30 years from now. So that's why I'm encouraging everyone, Paul, in that if you were working downtown on 9-11 or during any time of the eight months that followed, get your proof now. Get a letter from your former employer if they're still in business. Get some affidavits signed by coworkers in case, God forbid, you ever get one of these 68 cancers. Michael, talk to us about the first responders, the firefighters, the police, the EMT, what are the numbers there? How have they benefited from these two programs? Well, so the health program has reported that 110,000 people have registered for the health program. And again, it's a nationwide. So all your retirees who went down to Florida, Arizona, San Francisco, they're entitled just like the New York City firefighters and cops. Over 80% of the responders have enrolled because their unions have done a great job educating them. But only 30,000 out of 400,000 civilians have enrolled so far. That's how I get the 7.5% figure. And the biggest single reason, when I ask somebody 
from uh, New York Mercantile Exchange or J.P. Morgan Chase or the Bank of America. Why did you wait so long? They say, oh, I thought that these programs were just for firefighters and cops. They aren't. Look, I don't want to scare your listeners, but I'm going to just tell you the facts. I represented James Ed Roga, for whom they named the bill. Jimmy died of pulmonary fibrosis at the age of 34. They did an autopsy, and in his lungs, they found ground glass, asbestos, chromium, lead, benzene. These are all known carcinogens. I mean, if he was exposed and he inhaled these toxins, so did everybody else who listened to the EPA when they assured us that the air is safe to breathe. Remember that? Yep. Whose who's responsibility, Michael, if, it's, if this is a communication issue, um, is there some government entity that could be doing a better job in terms of communicating the message to those who might be eligible? Absolutely. I think the World Trade Center Health Program should do a much more outreach. They should be doing a better job in getting the word out there that these programs aren't just for firefighters and cops. Instead, it's left to my law firm and others uh, like me who are trying to spread the word. And it shouldn't just be up to private individuals to do this. I mean, this, thankfully, the single biggest source of the clients who come to me, and I now represent over 25,000 people, are my existing clients, you know, just word of mouth. But that's not enough. We need the government, which or NIOSH, which runs the health program. And the health program, by the way, is terrific. And did I mention it's free? Right. They should be doing a better job of yeah. outreach. All right, Michael, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us, uh, bringing us up to date on what is going on with these very important programs. Again, as we come up to the 20th anniversary of 9-11, Michael Barish, managing partner for Barash and McGarry. Um, interesting, uh, you know, some good numbers out of the, the, the first responders, map, but that 7.5% number really surprised me. Yeah, absolutely. You'd think that um, people would want to sign up at the very least. I mean, you don't have to be sick to to sign up um, and you you can register for the World Trade Center health program you can register with the victim compensation fund even if um, you don't suffer haven't suffered any illness thus far 